it's Martin and welcome to another video on my Knit365 YouTube channel. Today is Friday the 7th of January and this is the hotly anticipated, much requested and long avoided <laughs> by me, whip confessional video. Um, I posted a little photo to my YouTube story um, on Friday to say I'm filming the video. Everything was kind of ordered but I wish you could kind of see what's in front of me. Part of me wishes you could see what's in front of me so you can see the carnage of the semicircle so I've got everything to hand and the other part of me doesn't really want you to look because oh honestly it's fine we'll talk about all of these. There are there are definitely some things here that are going to get frogged so I'm glad that you're going to be with me. You can hold my hand we'll all take a breath together it's all going to be okay. So um, this is going to be a slightly longer video than some of the more recent videos. If you found me during the Vlogmas Madness when we did um, recently the Toft Advent Bird, or you found me in the Vlogtober Madness where I was doing Shawlography, the Stephen West Mystery Knit Along, you'll be used to regular bite-sized videos. But what I try to do um, outside of those crazy periods is a monthly video that's kind of a wrap up. What have I worked on in the month? What have I finished? What are my plans for the coming month? And then try to pop up every couple of weeks with something a bit more specific, whether it's a certain project that I'm working on or I've ripped some of my knitting back and I need to tell you all about it. Um, but those videos tend to be sort of 45 minutes to an hour. And this is definitely gonna be one of those I have no idea how long this video is going to be. It depends on how much I chat about the projects. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of looking forward. I'm hoping it's going to be quite cathartic to talk through and to share with you all. I have a very large cup of coffee. And I hope that you have one too. I've got my iPad so that I can... Go and find patterns if I need to, to remind myself. So there might be a little bit of fun as we navigate what we're working on. But I really do um, appreciate all of your support. And thank you for giving me some of your time today to talk through lots of my works in progress. Um, thank you for being here. As always, if you are a returning viewer and if you're a new viewer and you've just found me, what a great video to start with, in my humble opinion because we're going to talk about all of the things that I'm working on. And I'm looking around and it is pretty much all knitting. There are two crochet projects, I think. But I'm not going to count them at the moment. I'm going to put them, I'm, as I'm doing them, I'm going to put them on this side if they're staying and they're going on this side if they're going. So let's dig in. This one isn't a work in progress. <laughs> I'm just going to show this. This is my oldest, what would have been my oldest whip. Um, and yeah, I'm just jumping straight in. Yeah, but th th there's too many projects for us to, to chat. But this is my oldest work in progress. And I guess it's officially a work in progress because it's still on the needle. Um, albeit, it's not a work in progress. It is effectively a swatch. I started this many, many moons ago. It is the Windy or Windy. It's probably Windy, but it's spelt Windy. You know one of those words in English, like reading and reading, when it can be the same thing? Um, it's probably the Windy Scarf, and it's by Martin Story. And I was doing this, I, I wanted to make this for Mark, or actually Mark wanted me to make this for him. And the pattern is, as you see, it is um, alternating colours and all of this lovely cable pattern. But it goes on for the scarf. And Mark wanted it in grey, so we'd have a dark grey and a light grey. And I kind of thought, I can do that. But at the time, and I'm ad-libbing now while I find the date um, when I started it. At the time, I kind of thought, I've never done cables how hard can they be? Um, I'll just have a go at doing it. So I cast it on, but I bought some wool and my idea was that I was gonna make a cowl version. So I was just gonna do something quite small and then end up giving it as a gift to my mum, for example. 
And then um, once I'd done that, because of course I'm gonna repeat the whole thing once I've done all these cables, I'll then make the scarf version for Mark. So, <laughs> this is awful. So I started this on the 4th of January, 2017. So this is now five years old. I've only been knitting for seven years, seven and a half years-ish. Um, niece number one is seven. So that's how I, I, can't, I started knitting just before she was born. So just over seven years I've been knitting. And this was a project that I thought, I can make this. And I'm pretty pleased. Like, I'm not being funny. For my first ever go at cabling, like there's a little weird, funky thing going on on this side of the cable. But it's not a work in progress because this is it now. I've cut the yarn off. I've used the yarn. Um, I made a jumper for my mum, a mountain mist jumper um, two years ago. And I used this pinky wool, the two colours in the yoke. So I don't have this wool anymore. Um, I've just got this. But I guess it's officially classed as a work in progress. But what I probably should do is I'll just cast it off. And then I've always got this little swatch the adventurous me, newbie knitter, I can do cables. Um, so yeah, so I thought, I'm not showing that as one of my works in progress and I'm not counting it, but I just saw it as I was going through all the boxes and it's kind of like a really nice swatch um, and a bit of a, a, a growth journey for me as to where I've, I've been with my knitting. So I thought that was really interesting, but that will go on this side because it's not really a project. So, if there's a bit of rustling, there's a lot of bags and there's a lot of stuff and I need to make sure I don't spill my coffee. Right, the first up, I'm just gonna grab them as they're in front of me. This one is definitely getting frogged. So this was a cowl that I started for myself. And if I can think, so this was, um, December 2019. So I've had this for two years. Now, my original plan um, was to make a cowl similar to this. So this cowl here is the Self Care Cowl by Louise Tilbrook. And it's just glorious. Provisional cast on, and then you just um, join the pieces together with Kitchener Stitch, graft the pieces. That's what I was thinking of. And it's just got this lovely slip stitch motif. So this is the self-care cowl. And then Louise brought out another pattern that I think was called the mindfulness cowl. Um, and I cast this on in December, 2019. Mark bought me this wool. If you've been here a while, you know I'm absolutely obsessed with the musical Wicked. I don't know what it is about it. I'm just obsessed. I've seen it 37 times. I know I'm crazy, right? Um, but Mark bought me this wool from Countess Blaze, and this wool is just, it's wicked, isn't it? Literally, it's the colours of the musical, the Emerald City, it's just spectacular. And this is Space Cadet, so it's a super chunky yarn. It's got a little bit of Stellina in it, which you can see is just glistening. And it just works up gorgeous, but it's quite a busy yarn. And when I was doing the companion cowl, you couldn't see the stitch definition. So a bit deflated after I'd started the cowl, I thought I'd like to make a cowl with it. I've only got one skein of it. I know what I'll do. I'll just do a ribbed cowl. So I just cast on. I did a provisional cast on um, so that I could graft the ends. And then I just completely fell out of love with it because I was just like, how boring. I was trying to do a really nice pattern and the yarn just wasn't working. So I just did a, uh, a simple two by two rib and I thought I'll turn it into a cowl. I might twist it and make it like an infinity cowl. And it's just kind of sat there since December, 2019. So it's now, you know, a few years old and I've just never got to it. Fast forward to Yarndale, I think. No, Unravel, um, about 18 months ago, Countess Blaze were exhibiting at the show and they had one skein left of the Green Space Cadet. So I now have two skeins of this. And that's when I then thought, I'm just gonna frog this. 
this isn't going to be a cowl any longer. So my plan, I now have two skeins. So this is going to get frogged and I'm going to rewind it onto the ball. I need to think it, this has been wound for two years and this has been like this for two years. So I probably do need to undo this and then I need to re-skein this up back onto the Swift and then wash it so it kind of loses its memory. And I'll, I will do that before I start the next project. Um, but what I think I'm going to do, because even though this is a busy yarn, rather than doing the cowl that I wanted, I will make another one of these because I really like the pattern. It's a super easy cowl to wear for me. So I think I'm going to make another one of these and I'm also going to make a Sidewinder beanie. And I've seen that recently. Um, Stuart from the Wool Patch made one and it's a super chunky hat and as a sidewinder instead of it obviously is a standard hat shape but the pattern curls around it so I'm going to repurpose this yarn and the two skeins are going to become a cowl and hat combo sorted bish bash bosh but I'm very happy that this is going to get frogged so we're not going to call this a work in progress any longer. We'll call this as frogged from today. But it just means that I've got a project that I'm really happy with. I love wearing cowls. I love wearing hats when we go out walking. So it will get much more use um, by doing it that way. And I just feel like uh, I'm disappointed in myself that I couldn't find, I couldn't research another pattern. And I was so eager to cast on, come on, we can do it. And I cast on and yeah, it just bored him. So that is off to the frog pond. Rip it, rip it. Gone. Right. So that's one. One for frogging, none for keeping. There's not that many more that are going to get frogged. I don't think. Right. This. This project epitomizes me and why I don't finish anything because I get bored really easily. So this is a skein of, I think it's called No Rainbows Without Rain and it's by the lovely Caroline of the Co Colourful Creativity YouTube channel and look how glorious. It's these moody greys and this really colourful rainbow and Mark bought me this skein of yarn for Christmas, again, probably two years ago. And I started a slouchy beanie. Look how far, folks, I've got with this project. <laughs> it's nearly finished. I've started the decreases and all I need to do is decrease for the crown. Do you know why I haven't done it? Because the one day I was going to work on this, I was like, oh, I haven't got my double pointed needles with me. Please, all of you, frown, point at the screen, tut, tell me off. Isn't that ridiculous? So this is not going to get frogged. This is going to get finished. This is a very quick one that I can finish off. And what I've done is Caroline has a um, companion sock pattern. Or I think it started with a sock pattern. I've, I've stolen the technique for this hat. And what you'll see is it's a simple beanie knit in the round. But every time the colour change appears, you just pull the colour change. So it gives you this really lovely texture with these pearl bumps that just make the, the colours pop. And this features in the introductory montage. Um, so it's wonderful yarn. It's a, um, a staple of Caroline's, so you can always get it in her store when she's dyed them up. Um, I won't use much more of this to finish this. So this project will get finished, but I'm going to have all this wool left. So I do need to decide what to do with this and what I might do another cast on. I might make matching mittens. So I might split this into two balls and then I'll just make myself some matching mittens to go with it. And that'll be a really lovely set, I think. But this project is not going to get frogged and this project will be finished this year. It won't be in January. <laughs> I've, got, I've got lots of things I want to do in January, but... Um, this is living in, um, and there will be a theme again, for those of you who have been here a while, there will be a theme on the bags. This is living in a project bag by Gemma of the Little Grey Girl. This is one of the triangle bags. 
Gemma's logo if you've never seen it before. Um, and this has just got the cutest little pandas on it. I mean, who doesn't love a panda? So that project is so nearly done. And please, can you all like, Martin, when are you going to finish that hat? I need, that needs doing. There's not a lot that needs doing on this one. I won't do this now, but I think before I then reorganize all of this and put them away, I think I might put them into nearly finished piles and a long way to go piles. Because that, I could do that on a Sunday afternoon, couldn't I? Like literally sit down in front of the tally and then that's one off my list. So that's going this way. Okay, what is next? So we have this bag, also by Jem. <laughs> Love a little pyramid bag again. Oh, now this is also getting frogged and there's a reason for this. So this is also yarn by Countess Ablaze. And this is another Christmas 2019. I had a bit of a cast-on frenzy. I blame Ange from Yarn and Yarns for her 12 cast-ons of Christmas. And I decided I was going to cast on all the things. And I found some yarn, I found some patterns, and then none of the things that I wanted to make really worked. So this yarn, um, I am going to swear, but I do apologise. And it's not a really big swear word. This is the Brexit colourway by Countess Blaze. I'm not getting political. Oh, look, look at that. So I bought this and, oh, is this the Brexit colorway? Or is this the Boris Johnson Ministry of Truth? Bear with, let me find. This is Bojo's Brexit Bonanza. I was close. So this is Merino Double Knit and it is glorious it is just absolutely lovely and again I don't know what pattern I was going to do with this one but I started a pattern the pattern didn't work you couldn't see the pattern properly based on the color changes so I abandoned that and I thought I know what I'll do I'll do a cowl same as the other one so I just cast on again provisional cast on so that I could join these together and I just knit round and round. And I think that was a day or so's worth of knitting. So again, this was 2019. So it's been sitting in this project bag for two years. I've clearly got no interest at all in finishing this. And what I am going to do with this one is this is definitely getting frogged because the yarn is going to be repurposed. Again, it's all kind of fallen apart. So it's it needs reskeening and definitely is going to get washed this one because it's a double knit and because it's been sitting like this um knit up I will wash it so that it forgets that it's been this um this is going to become a radiate sweater by Hoey Locatelli um let me see if I can quickly find the pattern um and I am super excited to make this and I've already got the wool in my stash. So this is a plain body, but with a colored yoke. And I've got some, a yarn story merino. So it's merino, so it matches in a light gray, similar to that color. Let me show you another close up. And then my plan is so the yarn story yarn and then this is going to be the most amazing psychedelic colored yoke and i think that with a light gray will look lovely and will really stand out and really pop so if you just imagine that lovely pattern in that color so I'm really excited about that one. That is an aspirational cast on. It is something that I'm going to do because um, my yarn purchases, I'm, I'm not really one for just buying random skeins of yarn. Although I did with this one because it was a, a Brexit anti-political at the establishment kind of colorway that Countess Blaze did. Um, so I wanted to get in and I wanted to buy that but I kind of bought it. But most of my yarn has a purpose. So I now have all of the wool to make the body. So once I've resorted this skein of yarn out, 
I have all the wool ready to go. So it won't be a project that I'm going to immediately cast on in like the next couple of months, but it's definitely on my list that I would love to get going in 2022. I still say 2021. How is it 2022? Like, honestly, it's bonkers. My legs go to sleep. Um, so it's definitely something that I want to cast on this year. I have the wool. Maybe when I finished a couple of other sweaters, that will get done. But that one's off to the frog pond. And I'll get to it at some point. Okay, right. What have we got here? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to do this with all of them. Oh, I love that. So this is living in an extra large gem bag um, with all the confetti. And this is a recent work in progress. Although I say recent, when I looked back, I think I started this in March, April last year, and I haven't done anything else with it. This is definitely getting finished, and definitely getting finished in the next couple of months. This is Mark's Argyle sweater. Oh, look at it. It's just gorgeous. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with this pattern to the point that I'm not actually working on it. So how obsessed can I be? But this is an Argyle sweater. Um, the pattern is by Martin Story. And we are using variations of this um, John Arban Textiles Alpaca Supreme. Like, if there was squished vision, I would love you to feel this. It's 40% alpaca, 40% Falklands Merino, and 20% silk. Um, there is a specific video. If you go back on one of my monthly videos, I think there's a video about problems with intarsia or something where I talk about the bird's nest on the back um, and then there are updates. I think one of the thumbnails for one of the monthly videos has this. I've not made any more progress on this since then. The only reason I've stopped doing it is my own time commitment. It's not a pattern that you can, for me personally, it's not a pattern that I can um, or a project I can work on without looking at the pattern. It's relatively intuitive because you can see this cream line here, for example. So the next time you do it, you know that cream stitch is moving over one. So you can kind of keep up with yourself and make sure that you're in the right place. But for me personally, I do need to check in every row with a pattern. Um, I'm in a position now I can kind of watch TV with it. It's not that I've, I've not got the time to do it. But I think shortly after this project got to this point... Um, my sister-in-law's announced that they were having the babies. I was like, oh, baby knits. And I've not really worked on it. And then I've just got distracted with other things. June and July, I did my pride key ring. September, we did the West Knits knit along. So I've just got distracted and I just need to focus on this. I did promise Mark that he would have it in January. Um, to which he went, which January? And I went, oh, no, no, you'll definitely have it in January. And then we'll come on to other bits in a minute. I haven't finished the baby blankets yet, so it's not going to happen in January, maybe February. But I have promised him this one is coming up to the top of the list. So I've done, I'm about halfway up the back. It's about there. So it's a plain, uh, the pattern goes all the way to the back. And then um, you do the same for the front and you split it here and it's V-neck, no sleeves, sleeveless. So once I've, once I've done the main bit, it's actually quite quick to finish it because it's just picking up stitches and doing the ribbon but I absolutely love this pattern and I think it looks pretty good I'm really pleased like I think my tension looks really good I think the stitches look really crisp the wool is working amazingly with the pattern so that's definitely not getting fogged because far too much work has already gone into that one but that's going to stay and that's going on the needs to be worked on soon pile okay I'm opening some of these packs I'm like I'm not really sure what's in here oh okay so um this is yarn <laughs> this is yarn that I bought two years ago in Unravel may have even been three years ago in Unravel it would have been three years ago in Unravel because two years ago would have been the start of the pandemic. 
and then Unravel would have been cancelled, I think. Anyway, I bought it a while. It's by Ted Knits UK. Ted is an amazing dyer. Um, we had great chats at Unravel. Um, he's got a brilliant channel on YouTube, uh, on Instagram, um, as Ted Knits UK. Go and check out some of his colourways. And I love this. It's called Rusty Birch. And this is my Herbivore Shawl by Stephen West. And I got this far. Um, no story with this one, just stop working on it. Um, so you can see it's got these wing tips here that have this, um, twisted rib section. Um, and then you can see the spine. I think it's called herbivore because it's like the, um, like a leaf. Um, and these are meant to be depictions of the makeup of a leaf. I think I read that. I, have I made that up? Anyone that's made it? I think, I think that's right. Simple stocking stitch panel and then it repeats and then um, you get the same wingtip. Um, there's a small glitch in this one where I tried to fudge it, um, but I'm not ripping it back. There, it's got a small, you can see there's a little break in the but no leaf is perfect in the same way that no knit is perfect. Um, I stopped working on this one purely because you have to concentrate all the time because you are... So some of the stitch marks are fine. So that stitch mark is there to remind me that I now switch to a twisted rib section. But these stitch markers here, it's just fiddly because you've got to do yarn overs to create the holes. And I... Uh, It'll be interesting to actually pick this back up now because I think when I did this, the only shawl I would ever have made will have been my Starflake shawls, which would have been the very first West Knits knit along. Whereas I've since done two additional ones. I'm three years more experienced in terms of my own knitting journey. So I wonder actually, if I pick this back up, would I find these middle sections quite as fiddly? And that's the only reason I stopped. I was just like, I'm not making as quick as progress as I wanted to make. I was looking for more instant gratification and I wanted to get some stuff done. And that's the only reason I stopped. But I bought that wool specifically to make this pattern because I wanted to make this pattern and I wanted something that was gray. Um, and I just love the rusty color because it does look like you just splashed, splashed rust on it. It's gorgeous and it's really lightweight because it's fingering. It's 7525 Merino nylon. So it's done on small needles. Oh no, it's done on a four mil needle. So actually that's not that small, is it? Um, but yeah, so that's not getting frogged. I'm more than happy to keep this one and I'm going to do this one next month. I'm not. I'm, I, I'm not frogging it. I'm keeping it. I've put some work into it already. I really love the yarn. I really love the pattern. I just need to get it done. So that's also going in the keep pile. Uh, right. This one, living in the hexagon bag, is an Argyle sweater for Mark. It's another pattern by Martin Story. Martin Story makes great patterns for men. We are big fans of his work in this household. And this one is called Raiden. And this was started, <laughs> this was started in August, 2019. <laughs> Honestly, I'm disproven of myself. Like you can judge me all you want. Get a judging look out, get a judging finger out. Isn't that amazing? So this is a, a simple, I think, Aaron jumper. Cable panel, moving cable, and that's it. Do you wanna see how much progress? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> um, yeah. So I excitedly, Sundays are like my day for casting on. I really love getting up in the morning, pot of coffee, 
and a new cast on. And I remember I did it, I did all my ribbon, I started the pattern, and I think I've done two rows of the pattern. And I realized <laughs> cabling's really fiddly. <laughs> and the cables go on all the way up. And it's like, it's not quite every other row, I don't think. I think it's every four rows maybe you cable. But I basically realized it was gonna take me ages to work on this. And instead of then plowing on and having all the motivation, I basically put it away. I was like, yeah, it's too difficult. I'm not doing that. But we've got the wool. The wool is the one that was recommended in the pattern. So it is Rowan Soft Knit Cotton, which has since been discontinued. And we have a sweater quantities of it so we can make the pattern for Mark. It's obviously for Mark. If you've been here a while and you've seen Mark, he's an extra small. He's brilliant to knit for. Yeah, I'm not doing it. So this is 92% cotton and 8% polyamide. So part of me feels like all oh, my tension's probably changed in three years, but I'm okay because it's only the ribbon. I haven't really done the pattern. So I'm okay, like if I pick this back up, I would just start work on it again. Because if my tension has changed, it's only going to have changed the overall feel of the ribbon. Like the ribbon tension is not going to be that much different. I've got my cable needle attached as well. Look, so that I can just... Pick it up and let's go. So I'm not frogging this one because in my, one of my knitting objectives, my grandfather taught um, was was a brilliant knitter, and I've said before, I part part of me wishes I'd let him teach me to knit when he was alive, and he was one of the reasons why I, I learned to knit. He would whip these Aaron jumpers with cables out without a pattern, really, super speedy. That was what he was great at knitting at. And I kind of feel like I want to make an Aaron jumper and I can call myself a knitter then when I've made my Aaron jumper. So this also isn't getting frogged because I love the pattern and I love the wool and it's super, super soft. It's gonna be slightly oversized because it's a small, not an extra small. That's the only thing that's making me I need to talk to Mark about it actually because Mark is an extra small and he's going through this phase. He loves everything fitted. And I think this might be slightly bigger. So I need to double check the pattern because a lot of Martin Story's patterns, so like that Argyle pattern is a Martin Story and the smallest pattern size is a small. So I did some calculations in the beginning and I'm creating my own version of an extra small. So I've taken an inch off either side of the jumper so that I'm following the schematic for the small, but it's actually gonna be an extra small. That's the only thing that's just popped into my head. So I'm saying this isn't gonna get frogged. This is the pattern. Um, but I do need to double check because if it's a small based on, and it's the same size as the Argyle sweater, the small will probably be quite big on Mark and he probably won't wear it. And I'm not going through all of that hassle. So I'm gonna leave this in the to do part, to do pond. <laughs> this is going in the to do pile, not the frog pile. But I just need, um, yeah, I need to talk to Mark about that one now. You can see this is, I, I, I'm, I'm pondering. This has just occurred to me. Hmm, okay, right. This one is going in the stay pile, but jury's out. Okay, um, right. This one is getting frogged, but getting restarted. So this is living in the giant pyramid bag of the London edition. Massive fan of London. Love that bag. Um, and this is a very simple pair of mittens. Excuse Weston. This was a kit that I bought in the Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2019, 2018, a long time ago. These are the Joy Mittens by Isolde Teague. And they're a lovely pride themed knit. So I have the rainbow version, but you can make uh, many different pride themes. We've got the transgender version. We've got the, uh... I'm not sure. Why can't I think? Well, is that the pride? Is that the pan version or the bisexual version? I'm not sure. Anyway, they're little pride themed mittens, and they are lovely. And I really enjoy this type of a pattern. I bought it as a kit, but I have big hands, and 
I decided in my wisdom that the pattern called for three and a half mil needles. And I decided that that would be for smaller hands. And as my hands were bigger, I would go up a needle size and I would go up to a four mil. So I cast it on and it's too big. It's massive, honestly. Like, it was gonna bury me. Like, I can't put it on, I can put it on. And I did this again, this was an afternoon's project, but look how, look how loosey goosey and how big it is. So I kind of feel like I can do this on the recommended needles and it will be a much better fit. But this was the reason why I stopped this pattern because I cast it on, I was like, that looks a bit big. But I was so chuffed at the time because it's got this double knit, double knit section here so you've got the gray on the inside and then you've got the rainbow on the outside. It's just glorious. I've got all the rainbow colors and I need to rip it back and start again. But I've got a lot of wool and I've got a lot of the colors left. So I probably won't, I've talked about the muscle memory of the wool that it will remember it's been in this shape. So I probably won't rip it back and wash the yarn or whatever. I'll just break the yarn. I'll start again with the ball and the colors. And then if I run out, I'll, I'll use this. But I just need to start again. I just need to go down a needle size. And I haven't. Because again, this would be very similar to the cowls that I just lost interest because I'm guessing lots of you will empathize with that, that you start a pattern, you get really excited, you get into it, you realise it's not going the way you want. And you just stop. And it just sits in a project bag. So again, I don't think this is a project. Like, in terms of mittens, that's a one-month project. Like, if I did a little bit on that every couple of days, I could have that done quite quickly. I don't think it would take a long time to do, because it's just stocking stitch, and then you alternate the coloured yarns of the rainbow. So that's not going to be what I'm going to do immediately. I will probably focus and try and get this done before next Christmas. Um, it might be even be a summer knit, you know, it's some, something little that, that can be worked on. Um, so that is going to the keep pile rather than the frog pile, only because I'm just going to start it straight away. I'm not going to need to rip it back and do anything with. The pattern and the yarn work well together. It's my own ineptitude with tension. And yes, yes, before you start, I know lots of you are going, Martin, this is why you swatch. I know. I know, I know, I know. I don't swatch. It's my own fault. If I'd swatched, it'd be fine. But anyway, right. Next one. I need to lay these out so I can count them. because we're all gonna need the magical number, aren't we, when we get to the end. Right, um, this is a very easy one, very quick one. This is my Bosuan sweater by uh, uh, Vincent of Le Gasson. Um, he is at Bydells, as he his designer name, and on uh, Instagram. Um, you've all seen this multiple times before. I'm so nearly there, I just need to try it on. I think I've got one more inch to do on the body then the ribbon, and then I just need to do the sleeves. Um, there's nothing else to say about this one. It's not getting frogged. It's going to get finished. This is one that is staying very near the top because I love this jumper. I want to get it done. It's over a year old now, and I've just not prioritized me. I've prioritized lots of other projects. I don't put myself first. I'm going to do that. So at some point in January, maybe, definitely February. This is going to get done. This is also living in an extra large bag. Um, so that is staying. The next one is also staying and I'm kind of of two minds whether to show you about this. I'm just going to turn my iPad off because I've only got 5% battery. So if I need it, I want it to keep. Also living in an extra large bag. Um, I've, I've kind of trailed this a little bit. I will mention it 
but you've never seen this. Have you ever seen this? I don't think you've ever seen this. So I'm going to give you a sneak peek. This is um, in Color Lab. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not going to show you. I'm going to show you. The, I'll show you my swatch. I swatched. So this is a sweater for me, and it is made in Color Lab. Lovely contrast, dark grey and light grey. And there is a specific project video coming for this one. The video is a hot mess. It was the very first video I ever made that has never made it live. So the first video that you've seen, if you go back on my channel, um, this one was started before that one was put live. But I'm making a bubble sweater by West Knits. You will therefore know what it is. Um, if you've never seen it, it's in the most amazing sweater. Go and check it out. I've made one for Mark and I wanted to make one for myself, but I wanted to make a cardigan version and I'm going to stick it. So this is the swatch that I did in the round. I've not steeked my swatch yet. So this is the bubbles, not top down. So there's the ribbon, there's the bubbles. And then I've got a steek panel here that I'm going to cut. This is definitely not getting frogged. The jumper itself is finished. I've done all of the yoke, all of the body, all of the sleeves, it's all done. The only thing I need to do is cut it. And I say that's the only thing I need to do. It's the most scariest thing I need to do. Um, I flew through this project. I swear to God, I made this project in about three weeks because I was super interested in it. I It was all I was knitting on. And then the pandemic hit. And that's the reason why I've not finished it. So I did a steaking class with Jenny from Ammonite Yarns, my local yarn shop. Quickly cast this on, got it done, said to Jenny, if I come in and I've done all my steaks, will you check it for me before I cut it? You know, measure twice, cut once. You want someone to hold your hand before you cut your knitting. And she said, absolutely. And then the pandemic hit and the shop closed and we weren't allowed to do anything and life got paused. And this got paused. So I'm hoping that I can get this done quite quickly because I literally just need to do the crochet, cut it, and then just do the button band. So again, that's a that's a Sunday task that once I've done all the cutting, I just need to do two button bands. I'm not putting buttons on it. They're going to be just two flat panels because I don't really like buttons. I'd rather like a, a, an open cardigan. So that is definitely stay in. And I'm hopeful that that one, again, in the same way as my Boseron sweater, prioritising me, that's going to be one that gets done quite quickly. I just need to speak to Jenny and work out when I can go up because the shop is now back open um, and find out, like, when is their quietest time? I don't want to disrupt them while they're working in the shop. So I'll find out when when is good for them. Um, you know, I don't know, is a Thursday afternoon the quietest? And I'll, I'll, I'll try and fit in around them. So, but I'm really excited for you to see that. I really want to get that one done. Um, so that's that one. Um, right, this one. This doesn't live in a project bag because I hadn't really discovered my obsession for Gems project bags. This is living in a Liberty bag, don't you know? It's the Liberty shopping bag and it's only in there because that's where I bought the wool because the wool was discontinued. I couldn't get it anywhere apart from Liberty um, on a shopping trip to London. This is a cushion cover. Now, isn't that glorious? So this is a pattern by Martin Story. I don't know what the pattern's called. Let me check. This is Oswald the Owl. And there's the, the completed cushion. Now this is my own tension issue. So I had done a couple of things in Taja and a couple of things Fair Isle, but this was the first time I'd really combined those two techniques together. This is done with Rowan, I think it's Rowan felted tweed. I've got the dark and then the cream. 
I think it's granite. I don't know what the cream color is called. And I've done this. I did this in a couple of days and I think I kind of rushed it. And the reason this hasn't been worked on since is because the tension is all to pot. So it's meant to be square and it's not square, it's long. Now, this needs to be frogged, but I feel like it's like the gloves. I need to start again and I need to redo it. So the idea of the pattern and the reason it's my tension is all out is A, this was the first time I really tried to do this, but it's a mixture of intarsia and fair isle. So what I should have done is you do the intarsia technique here. So I have a ball of the cream, then I have a ball of the gray, but actually this gray and cream here, I'm kind of doing as a fair isle technique. Then you have a ball of cream in the middle, a ball of the gray with the cream, and then back to a ball of the cream. But I think what I've done, and you can already see, just by the way I'm holding it up, it puckers here. I didn't intarsia this bit. I think I fair isled this bit. And the pattern assumes, I think, a good knowledge of technical color work, because it just says, using fair isle and intarsia techniques follow chart. So I did it my way, not knowing any different. And the tension's all to pot. And my, the, the reason it does need to be redone is because I will struggle to find a cushion innard that is this shape because it's meant to be perfectly square and it's not, it's very much rectangled. And the tension's all to pot. And again, this one, when did I start this? Um, this was, oh my God, December, 2018. So that's three years old. Now I've got enough wool to make two of these. So my idea was gonna have a day and night version. So this was the day version. So we have a cream with a gray owl and I'm gonna do a night version, which is dark with a cream owl. Um, but again, in the same way with the gloves, did it, excited, focused on it, got it done in a couple of days, realized it didn't go to plan, inexperienced at the time, I guess, didn't really understand how I could fix it, didn't really have any appetite to do it again, left it in the bag, not done anything with it since. Because yeah, like, look at that, look at all, it's all bubbly and bumpy and it's not. So again, I think three years has passed, I can now do two-handed colour work pretty easily, that's my preferred method to do Fair Isle. Um, so I just need to think about how I would set my colours up again. So I said, would I have a colour of cream, a colour cream, a colour cream, a colour grey and a cream? I don't know. I need to, I, I probably need to swatch and have a little go at it. But I want to make this pattern. I've got all the wool to make two cushion covers. And once I've done the fronts, the backs are just plain stock and stitch. So they're really easy to do. Um, so I'm not, I'm going to leave this one in the, in the, to do pile because it's the same as the um, the mittens. I think I won't undo this one because there's too many ends. It's too it's too weird. I've got enough wool. I think to um, at least what I'll probably do is I'll go and do the dark one, um, and then when I'm happy with that, I'll then come back and I'll use the wool that I've got to start the next one. And then if I run out, I'll then start to undo it and I'll use bits of the undo, uh, of the undone wool to finish it off. But that's another one that I'm gonna claim as a work in progress. It's gonna stay here because I do want to work on it. I am, it is the right pattern and the right yarn. I, I could be motivated to work on it, but with lots of other things, it just fell by the wayside. But I'm gonna count it as a work in progress rather than a frog because I would like to get that cushion done. So that can join that pile there. Um, then we're coming up to some of the more recent things. So um, if you've been here for parts of last year, you'll recognize this. Um, this is my uh, flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. So simple raglan sweater, um, garter panel that comes down the sleeve. Um, I am making this in um, Woolly Knit Crafts Aran um, in the light grey 
colorway. And again, I've just stalled on this one for no other reason. I've got an inch to go on the body. Um, I did say though, I think because this has been, this had been hanging out on the needles for, it was about two years. There's a theme, isn't there? And for some reason, I've got this weird line around the bottom that you can see in the video. And I think it's just where it sat out on the needle for so long. Lots of you commented, I mentioned it in one of my previous videos, and lots of you commented about just block it. And I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm going to rip it back. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a lifeline in around, I'll, I'll go above it. I'll put a lifeline in, I'll undo that two inch, and then I'll do the three inches, the two inches again, plus the inch I need to do. And then I'll try it back on. And then hopefully um, it's just on the ribbon. But similar to my Boswan sweater, it's mostly done. I just need to spend a couple of hours picking that back up, ripping it back and then redoing it. And then it's just onto the sleeves. So that's absolutely not getting frogged. We're gonna keep that one. We love the yarn, we love the pattern. It is, it's super squishy, it's super sheepy. You know that smell? You all know that smell, because it's 100% British wool. Um, so this one's not living in a project bag because I don't have any more big project bags. So <laughs> this is actually split between a Countess of Blaze tote where the project lives and a gin festival tote. I don't know where I got that from. A gin festival, obviously, but I, I don't remember when. So that is living in those two bags. So that one is also staying, but again, similar to the hat, if I spent a weekend and try to focus on that one, I could get the body done in a weekend and then the sleeves over a week or so. So that's that's one that if I turn around and say, right, March, it's the jumper. I can get that one done quite easily. Um, the next project is living in my grandmother's knitting bag. And I'm so happy that I've got this bag. And within here are two further bags. So this is my Babette blanket. And this is a multicolored, multi-sized blanket. It's variations on a Babette, because I'm not following the exact Babette pattern. I'm doing my own version of Granny Squares. But what I've got is loads and loads of leftover Rowan felted tweed in all various colours. Let me grab a bundle for squares that I've already made. So this was section four, I'm very organised. When I've worked on this, I'm very organised. So we have all variations on a theme. So we have the greys and the darks, and then we've got a little pop of colour that appears. We've got some smaller ones. So little tiny grannies. So that's section four, and then that would make a panel that then joins on to the next panel. So I finished a section of these. So that's section three. So again, with all of these together. Um, I've even been sewing in my ends as I'm going, apart from the middle ones, because I'm that good. I do really like this one with this lovely little blue, gray, and the little pink. Um, and then a various size grannies all the way up to a couple of giant ones that will live um, within the blanket, surrounded by lots of the smaller ones. So the idea of this blanket is I have two bags. Um, I've got a bag with all of the dark blues um, in. So I dive into the bag and I just randomly pick out a colour. And then every so often I stick a contrast colour in. So I've got some sort of biscuity colours, I've got that light grey, I've got a, uh, a purple, I've got a pink. So they're all variations on a palette. I've got a lovely turquoise that I've not used yet. Um, so this is living in this bag. And the idea was I cast this on, so a crochet project, started it. And what I was going to do was whenever I had 10 minutes, that I didn't want to work on a specific project, I would just quickly whip up a granny square. And it never happened like that because I don't do granny squares often enough. I have to remind myself how the granny square pattern works. And what I found is the best way of doing this is saying, 
I'm going to have an evening on my Babette blanket and I get it out and I can do a couple of hours and whip through a load of them. So this project will never get done if I'm trying to do one at a time because it just takes me too long to remember where I was, too long to think about the pattern, choose the colour. So this is one that I'm going to keep checking in with throughout the year. It's not going to the frog pile. I, again, love the yarn, love the pattern. It's a scrappy project, so it's using up leftover yarn that I had. I've made a jumper for myself in that colour. Um, and I really loved that jumper. And I had loads of leftovers and I worked out I had enough yarn left over to make a blanket with scraps. And I had some friends donate some wool of the same style um, from Rowan. So again, I want to finish this one. It's going to be a long term project because it's a scrappy project. Um, but I'll hopefully get some time. Again, that's probably a summer, a good summer project if I've got nothing else on to to work on. So that's staying um, in Nanny's bag. Um, quickly mention this one. This one is obviously not going to get frog. This also isn't in a bag because I don't have a bag big enough. But this is all the wool for my baby blankets. So if you've not seen this yet, this is... Um, Bow Peep Double Knit by West Yorkshire Spinners. And I'm making blankets for the new babies that we have in the family. So niece one, no, niece three, who was born New Year's Eve, is having these colours. So that's a white. And then nephew one is having these colours. Excuse the rustling. So I think they're going to be lovely, lovely. Um, I am 50% of the way through the blankets. Um, there are pink squares over on the sofa that I haven't added to the pile, but they're done. Um, so there are two lace patterns that I'm doing. If I just quickly show you off the lace pattern. So this was um, a blanket knit along that Martin Story did for Rowan a few years ago. Um, it was a free pattern that I managed to get hold of then. It does look like they've discontinued it as a free pattern, um, but you can't buy it either. So a few people have asked me for the pattern. Um, I obviously can't share it with you for copyright reasons, but feel free, get in touch with Rowan, because it was a free pattern, so hopefully they will just send it to you. But this is the lace square, the first one, with these lovely triangles. So I finished all of the triangles lace pattern, and the next one is like a little sweetie shape with a diamond. Um, so I'm having a bit of a break this weekend from baby blankets, but I'm doing all of niece one, uh, nephew one and niece three's blanket squares for the first one. Then I'll do all the second ones. Then I'll sew them all up. Then I'll do all the borders. So I'm a production knitter. I like to just work through it rather than doing baby boy's blanket. And then I'm like, oh, I've now got to do the another blanket. So I'm just going to do them both at the same time. So again, not getting frogged. Definitely counts as a work in progress. And I'm on track. I've set myself a daily target. I'm on track for this to be finished in January, possibly into February. Depends how long the cable border takes me to do. But that is not getting frogged. So that can also stay as a work in progress. And the last one that I'm counting as a work in progress that is on the needles today is my scrappy socks for my... Uh, there's a knit along that is running um, and it is socks to match your shawl. So I'm making scrappy socks for Mark in the colours that I used for my West Knits shawlography. So we have these um, three greys moving into the cream. And what I'm doing is this is a pattern by Louise Tilbrook. It's her Bob socks. So it just has this lovely twisted rib panel that runs down the middle on both sides. I'm making a long tube and then once I've finished the tube I'm going to cut them in half so I'll have two socks. Then I will add the red colour from my shawl and we'll have contrast cuffs, heels and toes so it'll be an afterthought heel. Um, the knit along runs until the end of January. It's going to be touch and go whether I get it done for the end of January. I think I've worked out I need 32 of these. I did five in one night the other day. Um, 
when I'd had a bit of a break from the blanket squares. So I do need to, I can get it done if I dedicate some time to it, I think, but the baby blankets and other things. So if I don't get it done for the knit along, it, it, it's fine. You know, it's been great to take part and to be pushed to do something with your scraps. But if I don't get it done, I don't get it done. I am gonna try though. So this is something I'm gonna try and work on in January. So that's those. So that is an hour bob on according to my timer. And we have frogged two things. And I'm claiming for works in progress, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 which is better than the 18. So I was saying it was 18 because that's what I thought it was gonna be. Is that right? Have I missed any? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I currently have 12 works in progress that I'm gonna actively finish. And that would have been okay because that would have been 12, that would have been 14. And then I've got two that I wanna to talk to you about now new cast-ons, um, which would take me to 16. So I said it was 18 there, thereabouts. Um, I was obviously working on the baby cardigans at that point as well. So they've been finished as an ongoing project. So I'm okay with that. 12 is a good number. Um, and then very quickly then some new cast-ons. So I am, oh no, that's not a new cast-on. That was wool that I bought. Um, so I talked in my end of your wrap-up video that I finished my baubles and my baubles was my 12 month project and I'm going to do a new 12 month project of the Toft 12 birds. Um, I haven't started it. I have the wool um, to make the partridge in a pear tree and I've forgotten his name. I don't know what his name is. It escapes me, but I've got the wool to make the partridge. It's gonna live in this luxury velvet bag by Jem of the Little Grey Girl. Um, and so I'm going to start this one this weekend because I'm 50% the way through the blanket squares now. I've had a cracking week. I've done eight squares this week, which is fantastic. So I'm going to have a long weekend now. It's my non-work day on Monday, so it's my knitting day. So I'm going to spend some time casting two new things on. I'm going to start my 12 birds project early in the month. So hopefully I can get that bird done this month and I can do my one, one a month. So that's going to be that one. So that's gonna take us to 13. And then my 14th project, um, again, I won't go into this one too much because I think I might do a separate video series for this one. Um, but I was gifted by Mark's mum for Christmas. Um, the Le Gasson, Max and Vincent did a collaboration with Amy from La Bienemy. Um They've done a holiday collaboration, which then, is a wool set. So it was kind of advent themed. Everything was all wrapped up. Some absolutely glorious colors. I haven't opened all of them yet because I've just not had time, but like, look at that. This is Suri, oh, baby alpaca. It's so squishy. But there is a cowl knit along that uses all of the wool from the kit and I haven't started it yet. It's a weekly knit along, and by the time you watch this video, clue two of that will be out, and I haven't started it yet. So again, I've had a good week in terms of blanket squares and sock for what I wanted to work on. So I'm gonna reward myself, again, thinking of me, I'm gonna reward myself this weekend with a start of a bird on Saturday, and then Sunday is mystery knit along time for the Max and Vincent and Amy cowl. Um, that's gonna live in this project bag by Jem. Um, so that will take me to 14 works in progress. And I do think that is me done. That is all of my works in progress. I'm gonna have a slurp of tea. When I was working through my projects, I did find two other Jem bags that I haven't got projects in, which it would be rude, wouldn't it? Like a bag, a project bag without a project in isn't filling its baggy purpose. Um, but no, I, I, in all seriousness, I, I feel much happier. I've been telling you it's 18. Is it 18? Is it 16? I don't really know. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing 
what I've been working on. The final thing I just wanted to touch on was my plans for the rest of the year then. So we've just done all of my um, works in progress. I didn't finish any of my Instagram nine, my nine grid that I talked about in my last video. I haven't finished any of them from last year. So this is my plan for this year. And we've just touched on a number of these. So as well as trying to, like, I'm not going to set a target. I don't want to get my whips down to a single figure because now I've re re-established my relationship with lots of these. I'm quite excited about lots of them. And the whole reason I love the project bag concept is because I could literally just grab this and I can go and it's got my needles. It's got all the notions I need. There's a print off of the pattern or I've got my pattern on my iPad. So I can just grab and go, which is why I love them in these all in these project bags. And I've said this before, this isn't a sponsored video by Gem. I just love her product. It's so well made. Um, and yeah, I just love Gemma. Um, so the projects that I want to finish in 2019, no, what am I on about in 2022? Some of these I started in 2019 or I bought the wool for um, are as follows. So my bubble sweater, that signifies my bubble sweater, the steaked version. We've talked about that one. Um, my Beauceron sweater, we've talked about that one. This is the Monsieur Plastique jumper by West Knits. This is for Mark. I don't have the wool for this one. Mark would like it. We need to find wool. It'll stay on the list. Mark's Argyle sweater, we've talked about that one. Mark's Aaron sweater, we've talked about that one. Um, I want to make a love note for my mum. I've bought the wool. I've got some amazing wool from Labby Enemy. It wasn't cheap, but my mum is worth it. And she's very knit worthy. So I've got the wool to make a love note for my mum. It's her birthday in August. I did say this at this point last year. Maybe I'll make it for her birthday. We'll see. Um, this is the Gansey sweater, I think, by West Knits. Um, I'd like to make that for myself. I really love these colours. Um, and that's made in... Brooklyn Tweed. So I haven't got the wool for that one, but I'd quite like to do that if I get a chance. My Babette blanket, that's kind of what it will look like, but obviously in my colours, we've talked about that one. And the Radiate sweater by Hoey Locatelli, we've talked about that one as well. So the Ws, I've got the wool for. So of my nine, uh, one, two, three, four, five of the nine are already in bags on the needles. Um, I have wool for an additional two of the nine. So there we go. So... If I can stop casting things on, and if people in my family can stop having babies that distract me with baby knits, then I might actually get something finished. So my plans for the year are to really work through my stash. I have so much wool that I've bought for different projects. So on top of that, I've got wool to make an actual bubble sweater for me in blue with yellow bubbles. I've got enough wool to make four shawls. Um, and I've already chosen the shawl patterns. I've already got the wool. I just need to get going. So I'm not going to be one of those people that say I'm not buying any wool because we all know I'm going to buy wool. I'm going to go to Unravel again. I'd love to go to Yarndale again. I'm going to buy wool. Things are going to jump out at me. I've got lots of things in my stash that I want to get cast on. But, you know, this is my enjoyment, this is my entertainment, and I've got lots of things here that I want to finish. And I've got lots of things that, let's be fair, by March I could probably finish most of my works in progress, which will clear the deck so that I can start lots of new things. I just need to be a bit more disciplined. And I've really enjoyed the discipline. I'm like, right, I need to do two sections on the sock, two colours on the sock a day, and I'll get it done by the end of the month. And I need to do one baby blanket square a day well, I'm ahead of my plan now, which is how I can have the weekend off. So I feel like I've been really disciplined and it's only the 7th of January. So if I can keep that up, I won't keep it up. But if I can keep that up, I'll get a lot done this year. But there we go. Hey ho. It'll all get done. And like I keep saying in all of my videos, this is my hobby. It's my downtime from work. I love my knitting. I love my crochet. I love you all and being able to record my videos and sitting and chatting with you all. So there's no stress. Like last year, I finished a lot last year, as um, you saw in my montage in the last video. I didn't finish any of my plans. Nothing that I wanted to do got finished. But I'm okay with that. Like, it's no, it's no stress. And lots of you have said that you kind of like that attitude and that approach. And I feel like sometimes we can put so much pressure on ourselves 
and when things go wrong, and like I've said, fudge it. If, if, if Mark won't see it, I get away with it. There's a fudge in every pattern. Let's not stress. As Stephen says, through the West Knits knit alongs, say yes, don't stress. It'll all be fine. Um, but I'm going to try and grab a load of bags. Because <laughs> there's a thumbnail here somewhere, isn't there, with all of the bags. That's definitely going to be the thumbnail. But yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed sitting down and seeing lots of my projects. Those of you that have been here for a while, there will be projects here that you've never seen. So it does feel good that I've been able to, you know, confess, confess all my sins. <laughs> but I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know in the comments below, what are your plans for the year? How many works in progress have you got? Have you got more than me? I do feel more organised now. I'm going to write all these down so that I know how many I've got. Um, let me know what you're working on. Let me know what you've enjoyed from my project. You know, once I've done the baby blankets, I'm going to do my two jumpers and Mark's Argo sweater. What should I work on next? What really interests you? What would you like to see more of? Let me know. It's been super fun getting to know lots of you and seeing all the regulars that comment and like my videos and chatting to you on Instagram. Um, those of you that tag me in your pictures, um, I love seeing them. So thank you so much. Please keep doing that. It's great that I'm just talking to my phone and it's great when you tag me in things because I get to see what you're working on. I always get to see the other side of the camera, which is lovely. So I'm going to leave this video there. It's just over an hour. It could have been longer. Like I could have talked a lot more about some of these projects, but I feel like it's been a good video. Um, at some point in my sort of podettes, um, I'll probably film a bit of footage as I rewind the wool because I think some of what I've talked about that in previous videos that I'll need to rewind the wool and wash it. A few people have commented they've never seen or heard that before. I've never done that before so I'll need to do a bit of research and work out the best way of getting it back on the swift so that I don't lose it and how to tie it and so there'll be some more videos come in about the stuff that I frogged and getting ready to start new projects and yeah lots more footage coming from me. I'm going to try and post once a fortnight um, I'm not going to be as regimented as saying it's every other Saturday or whatever. Um, it does need to still fit in around work and life and all the rest of it. But I'm going to try and post once a fortnight um, where possible. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. I'm keen to do a Q&A video at some point. So don't necessarily put, com put questions in the comments box below because we'll do a separate pre-Q&A video, I think, so I can keep them all in one go. But happy to do like a Q&A video um, I think a few people have asked about that. What's in my knitting bag? What's on my notions pouch? L loads of different things like that to get to know me a bit more, if that is of interest to you. Um, and yeah, I'm going to leave it there because um, I need to tidy all this way because Mark's going to come in in a minute. He's going to go, what's going on? So I need to tidy all this away. Um, but I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. It's definitely been a fun one for me to sit down and think about and share all of my things with you. So as I said right at the beginning, if you are a returning viewer, thanks as always, thank you for coming back. If you're a new subscriber um, or a new person following me and you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button. It helps me to grow my community and I really do love having you here. Thank you for giving me a bit of your time today. Um, next video then in a couple of weeks time. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for being here. So until we speak again, happy crafting.